so in this animation there's a lot of things going on and i'm going to start off with probably the ground and and the background uh, landscape that we can see in our final animation so to create this is somewhat simple uh, i basically used um as you can see some modifiers here so i basically got plane subdivided a couple of times added a displace modifier with hype map i think it was I have the hype map in the description. I made a video a couple of weeks ago on how I use, how I create landscapes. So I might put that in the description also. And I also use a smooth modifier to just smooth um, the entire thing. So you can see it's kind of rigged. So I just add a smooth thing. I can also just use the smooth too. Um, if you right click, I'm click smooth. But it's not to do that way. Um, so that's that. Uh, the texture, I'll show you the texture right now. This is how the texture works. Ignore this. This is not even connected. So the way it works is if you have two Musgrave textures added together into these mapping ranges, you create this very detailed uh, texture. And then if you use the color ramp, you can adjust some more parameters, which is very nice. Um, so that's how that created. I also copied that from another video. So this is the sort of texture you use for like planets or something. So I might leave a link in the description there too if you want to look further into that. Um, EV. This is um, basically an EV generator here. Uh, I just changed the texture to more of like a golden style, which I tend to use recently quite a lot. So this EV generator is quite a bit of them on the internet. I just downloaded one of them. The one I have uh, has gravity included into it, which is very nice, makes things realistic. And I highly recommend it. I'm not sure if I know where exactly I got it because this was a long time ago. So that's that. So I'm gonna hide this. You can generate some rocks. Uh, so if you click on add mesh, you should be able to have a rock generator. I think you have to enable something in the preferences. I'm not 100% sure what it is, but this comes with Blender uh, for free. Some of the important things, I suppose, would be this um, sphere in the center. So if I play the video, you can see it like rotates or something, right? And this is actually just a Geometry Nodes uh, setup. So that I basically watched a video um, which was made by Cartesian Caramel. Hopefully I, I pronounced that correctly. But as a channel on the YouTube, uh, he makes a bunch of these live videos and it's primarily focused on geometry nodes, which is pretty good. So this is using the new simulation nodes uh, for version 3.6 for Blender. So as you can see, uh, here's a setup. It's pretty massive. Um, but I highly recommend watching the video. Um, I have a link in the description also for that. Because you could copy this um, the way I have it right now. Uh, I'm just going to scroll over most of these stuff. You can pause the video. But it probably won't work for you because um, most of these settings are specifically for this object. Sometimes you're going to have an issue where it's not going to work properly, which is a problem. Uh, that's why I recommend watching the video because it tells like what every node does and what settings to change for specific shapes. So I recommend doing that. Uh, in the animation, you see that I have some sort of like self-fracture explosion. So basically the way I do these sort of things is that I record, I render um, all like the first set of animations to a certain frame, such as 110 frames. I then stop rendering, I disable this um, uh, center thing, uh, object that's rotating. And then I'm gonna create a new object I'm going to have a, like show the new object, which I'm going to basically copy the original one. So there's a seamless transition. They're going to add an add-on called RBD Labs, which basically fractures um, materials uh, pretty good. So I've basically been using that for quite some time. I have a link in the description, which is also affiliated. So if you think considering getting the, <clears throat> getting the add-on, then please do. It's very good, and I always recommend it. So I basically have this sort of fracture thing, which basically continues seamlessly after frame 110. I keyframe the camera, so it kind of like moves from left to right. Uh, nothing hard there. Then I have some depth of field and lo focal length. I usually keep that around 30 to 35. Default is 50, which I'm never really a fan of. 
So yeah. Oh yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, I guess the sky, yeah. God damn it, the sky. So the sky is also an add-on. It's called Atmosphere. Physical Atmosphere. Um, I pretty much use it for most of my work. And it's pretty good. And I highly recommend it. And yeah, that's about it. So um, yeah, thank you for watching. If you like the video, please subscribe. There's going to be multiple links down in the description for most of these resources which you can use for your own work. And yeah, thank you for watching.